Hey everybody, Brandon from the SAS Snack Food Appreciation Society coming at you for today's edition of OTR on Tuesday, May the 15th, 2015. I'm at Burger King again. You know what that means, or do you? Come right back with me and you'll find you out. You are looking live at the Burger King restaurant in the Kingstown area of Alexandria, Virginia. Next to the newest location of Lido Pizza, as well as the Taco Bell KFC over there in the distance. There's a Walmart over there. Of course, Kohl's, where apparently they have great values, I'm told. And today I am also here for a great value. That value being the two for five deal at Burger King, something they've been somewhat famous for over the past year. And they're also famous for shuffling that damn two for five menu up quite a bit and quite often. Um, basically, today I got two things I've never tried before. A variation of an old favorite and something else that's just kind of an afterthought. Because I'd hope to get the extra long cheeseburger, but it's not on the two for five anymore. And I'll be damned if I'm paying almost four dollars for that thing. Alright, but the star attraction today on the two for five menu is... The teriyaki original chicken sandwich. Now that's kind of an oxymoron in itself. How can you be both teriyaki and original at the same time, huh? I'm not really sure about that, but we'll see. Let me go ahead and open up this bad boy and show you what it's got. All right, it's the regular long bun that you get on the original chicken sandwich with sesame seeds on it. Open off that bun and you get copious amounts of their terrible chopped lettuce, a couple of, uh, tomato slices there. There is mayonnaise underneath that lettuce. There's the fried chicken patty, and that's exactly what it is, a processed chicken patty. Uh, pick this up, and underneath there you got some sort of teriyaki sauce. I don't know what brand, I don't know, you know, of what ilk or anything. They just say it's teriyaki sauce. Uh, part of the two for five. If it's not in the two for five, it's like four dollars and something for this sandwich, and it's absolutely way too much. Uh, I went ahead and also got, for the first time ever, the big fish. Uh, I'm not a big fish sandwich guy, so I don't get them very often, but I went ahead and decided to get it because I wanted to get something on the two for five menu I hadn't tried before, and everything else is redundant. Uh, it seems to be on a different bun, a brioche perhaps style bun. More of their crappy ass chopped lettuce. Oh my god, I can't stand their lettuce. Underneath there, looks like there's a couple of pickle chips. Indeed, crinkle cut. And underneath the fish patty, you get some tartar sauce. Tartar sauce. Um, fish patty seems a little bit limp. Anyway, got two sandwiches to try out for you today. And one other thing, that is the Oreo Red Velvet Shake. Uh, this thing was $2.49 for a small. Going to try that out as well. I'll be right back to try that out, as well as these two sandwiches today on OTR. All right, guys, I am back, and sometimes I just don't do things the right way. I did not hit record when I was supposed to a second ago, so I went ahead and bit both of these products, and I already gave a review to you guys. I'm pretty damn dumb, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again real quick just to simulate it so you can get your full OTR show, starting with the teriyaki chicken sandwich. Well, basically, um, I think that the teriyaki actually does add a good flavor to this chicken. I was kind of eh, on the fence about whether teriyaki would be good with the fried chicken sandwich. And it end up being so. So that's pretty darn good in terms of flavor. But uh, you can't mask the flavor of the mushiness inside the actual chicken patty, which is not fantastic as usual. I used to like it when I was a kid, but not so much anymore. Um, just a little mushy once you get past that crispy uh, coating. Um, the chopped lettuce is completely annoying. It's all over my damn truck. I'm going to be spending about an hour in this 90 degree heat. Uh, checking that out and trying to clean out all the lettuce out of the different crevices and stuff. Uh, the tomatoes add nothing to it. Uh, the bread is okay. It's a little bit spongy. It's a little bit like that uh, uh, rubbery kind of way that the Subway bread kind of gets sometimes, but otherwise it's okay. Overall, I'm going to go ahead and give this sandwich a 
half of a thumb up. The teriyaki is not too sweet, a little bit savory and salty. Doesn't over salt the meat, thankfully, though, because if it did, we'd be in trouble because it's already a salty sandwich. So half of a thumb up for the chicken sandwich. As for Mr. Fish over here, let me take one quick bite of that, and I'll tell you what I think about it. Okay, the fish to me tastes a little bit more natural and authentic than, say, a filet of fish from McDonald's. The um, tartar sauce, however, has no zing to it whatsoever, so really kind of like a mayonnaise. Doesn't really have that pickly kind of pickup that you get from a, a real tartar sauce. I guess that's why they added the pickled chips, but those are kind of drowned out by, once again, the copious amounts of chopped lettuce which I can't stand, I hate, and they should get rid of the damn chopped lettuce. It is an affrontage to society, okay? Knock it off, just put some leaf lettuce on there. It's less labor, I mean, come on guys, be smart. Get rid of this damn chopped lettuce. Um, outside of that, the bun, nothing spectacular, a different texture certainly than what you get from the other bun on the chicken sandwich there. Um, no sesame seeds, obviously. But it doesn't really taste like a brioche or anything. I think they just made it up to look like a brioche. They didn't really call it brioche, I don't think. But either way, not that great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and give the uh, fish sandwich as well a half of a thumb up. So half of a thumb up for the chicken sandwich. Half of a thumb up for the fish sandwich on this disjointed edition of OTR. And now, in the 90 degree heat, I'm going to attempt to cool down with this... Oreo Red Velvet Milkshake. Uh, I guess they're playing off of the Red Velvet Oreos that were out and we reviewed uh, on Snack Briefs back in February, I believe. Uh, yeah, this thing is almost completely melted. It wasn't that thick to begin with, so uh, I guess we're just going for flavor here. Let's see what that tastes like. Doesn't taste like chocolate, and that's what uh, red velvet is supposed to be, right? Right? Right. Doesn't taste like Oreo. Just tastes like milkshake. Doesn't have a distinct flavor of its of its own at all. Doesn't taste bad. Just tastes like a milkshake. Maybe a vanilla milkshake with a couple of Oreo, Oreo crumbles in it and some whipped cream. Beyond that, not impressed. $2.49 for the small. And, uh, yeah, probably wouldn't get this again over a regular Oreo milkshake or even a vanilla milkshake. So I'm going to go ahead and give this a third of a thumb up. Not great. All right, guys, thanks for watching OTR today. I am roasting. I am sweating, as you can see. Uh, so I need to get myself into the Wally world over there and buy myself some deodorant. Not that I stink, but I just ran out. Anyway, also, uh, follow me on Twitter at BrandonReichSAS, hashtag Snack Society. Join the SAS group on Facebook by clicking on the link down below. Hundreds of the coolest people in the world are in our group, and you should be too. Also, um, check out the Instagram, BrandonReichSAS. Comment, like, subscribe, and share. All that good stuff, the four horsemen of YouTube. And in the meantime, in between time, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.